traveler. Paimon, it's been a long time. Oh, hey, Hoshin. Long time to see. Fancy meeting you here. How's work these days? Thanks to the help of people like you and colleagues like Ganyu, better all the time. But I've been feeling distracted at work lately. I just feel constantly agitated. <sighs> it's a long story. But my father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position due to health issues. Huh? What's wrong with Uncle Tian? Nothing specifically. He's not unwell. He says he's just increasingly low on energy these days. He's always said old age comes for us all in the end. Still, I just can't help but feel a little emotional watching it happen to him. Anyway, my father's currently on the second floor of Yangsheng Tea House. Why don't you come pay him a visit with me? He seems very fond of you two. I'm sure chatting with you will make him very happy. Sure, let's go! <laughs> what a lovely surprise. Welcome. Hoishi, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure story. Hoishin told you, didn't she? Don't worry, I'm quite alright. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. As I grow older, I'm starting to find that with many things, though the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. Especially recently, I've noticed a rather drastic drop in my energy levels. I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless, I wish to pass on the position before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. How difficult is it to transfer the Tianshu position? Oh, well, you see, the Tianshu is a rather unique position among the Liyue Qixing. Historically speaking, the Tianshu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So a public selection process would not be suitable. We also want to keep any prospective Tianshu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So we tend to be as discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianshu typically recommends their candidate of choice, and this is then approved by the other Qixing members. So in other words, you pick someone, and then Lady Keqing, Lady Mingguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Not to despair, however, because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf as assessment officer. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. Oh? Who is it? I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget all about me. Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tian Shu. Might be a good opportunity for you. Hmm. What do you think? Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with the new Qixing, right? Alright then. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind-the-scenes planning? 
My work's of the covert variety, too. Don't you think I might make a good Tianxu? Huh? Yelan, you want to be the next Tianxu? I'm not opposed to the idea, but I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily after how long you've been working together. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position, I'll recommend you for the job. Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead. Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this fine establishment, this runs on the house. You're all set? Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Qin Wei, Ming Bo, and Zhu Yi. Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Ming Bo works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhu Yi is focused on study and travel. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really matter if you forget since we'll be assessing them at Yue High Pavilion in a short while. Qianwei, Mingbo, Zhu Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what does the assessment involve exactly? Let's leave that until we get to Yue High Pavilion. All right. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Got it. We'll keep our eyes wide open. My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This is a huge occasion and I don't even get a chair. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I... I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Qianwei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Ming Bo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow! One of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through, get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done.
finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tianshu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh? So you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. Mind your tone, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, Mingbo. I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled, uh... 2,347 cases. I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in, uh, uh, 16 days? My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for, uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, Two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well. I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the Yue Hai Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. He seems like a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. 
but he and Shenwei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yiwan. Last but not least, Jur Yi. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tien's. Having someone like Jur Yi take the position would certainly put Uncle Tien's mind at rest. Great! We'll see. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tien. I see. Then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right. Then let me ask this. The ideas in Jur Yi's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh. I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates. For fear of affecting your judgment. But I can tell you now. Those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Bo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Jerry was with me for the longest duration. Oh, so how did you get to know them all, Uncle Tian? Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Guo came to my attention in the course of my work. <laughs> As for Jerry, <laughs> I was pure happenstance. We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Jerry came from a poor family, and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quickly he got on. Quite. And now, all of a sudden, he's grown into a mature young man. It's a joy to see. But it also gets one thinking. The young are growing up, and I am growing old. How time flies. No one can escape the cycle of life. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It, it just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. Ooh, and freshly caught fish... Ah, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago, Jerry purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. When we've been fishing recently, Jerry always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Ah, oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my age, who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. Oh, can Paimon come next time too? Paimon really wants to try it. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. 
Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your final decision only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. Remember, you must be thorough. Understood. Come on, let's go talk somewhere else. Bye-bye, Uncle Tian. Look after yourself. So, it's gonna be Jerry, right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example... Wen Yuan, Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wen Yuan and Shanghua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shanghua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wen Yuan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he all right? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. Shanghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qian Wei's background. Wen Yuan? Go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingguo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, so what about Juri? Juri? Well, obviously, as the most promising candidate, we will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Bo Lai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Huh? What's Bo Lai doing here today? Look. Your asking price for this batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever. You won't find anyone who disputes that. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. Even so... <laughs> alright, alright. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way, I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. Oh, what are you doing here? And to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. I got to them first. Don't get any ideas. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Juri. Have you heard of him before? Juri? Yes, he's quite well known. I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young and he was treated cruelly by the local community. 
One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Jerry never retaliated. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings, a gentleman of talent and character, and, uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not too late. If I could hire him to be the brand ambassador for Wanyo Boutique. Oh, he sounds like a decent man. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Why are you asking about him anyway? Uh, you aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah, that's Jerry right over there. Why don't we go and talk to him? Where? Where? It's him, all right. It looks like he's chatting with Lin Long. Come on, let's follow them and listen in. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract. And hey, don't try and cut me out of this. Hey! I understand. Let's walk and talk. So, you were looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of- What's the hurry? Don't get too close, or he'll see you. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. The truth is, an old friend of mine who likes to have a drink now and then. He fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high quality fakes. How very thoughtful of you. Leave it to me then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. Thank you very much, Miss Linlong. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jerry. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. Uh, do we have to? Wait, you're not just trying to dig up some dirt on Juri because you want to be Tianchu yourself, are you? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianchu, I'll look out for you guys. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? We will? Well, come on! Off to the South Wharf we go! The wharf is as busy as ever. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Well, let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Welcome. What would you like to buy today? Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the, uh, Liu Wei Anglers Association, and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. 
We've heard about this young man called jur -E, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? Whoa! Yeon made up a whole fake identity! Without batting an eyelid! Ah, yes, jur -E. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me everywhere they go they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm, apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. Yeah, we think so too. But I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Why is that? He's good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't one of them. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around. Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. Hello, we're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Wow, she switched identity again! Society for Fish Price Research? Uh, I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business! Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain jur -E who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. I know the guy. I can tell you what I know. I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Oh? What is that? Because he's so poor, his parents died when he was a very young and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. No one wanted anything to do with him. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but you'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora. So, I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's been selling a few fish. It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that. You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. I think he has pretty low self-esteem, but hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. And nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Not a problem. And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Hmm. Doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, it's you guys! Wait, what's the phrase? Oh yeah, honored to meet you. What brings you to me? The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! Uh -uh. So what do you wish to know? 
Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Huh? Now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of Jur E? Sure have. You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of Jury. For example, um, uh, I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword fighting heroes. Oh, I can completely understand that. Then let me ask you this. Do you remember roughly when the grown-ups started talking about Jury? Oh yeah, I know that. It was about two or three months ago. Before that, people always used to talk about Jury in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Oh, definitely. Great, so next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again. Any of that sounds strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Juyi seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gao spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True, but the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about Jur E's stories? Clearly, they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of Jur E has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor. None of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kinda strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur E was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Right, and that changes everything. It could mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu Ed Shishin. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixin? That sounds serious! What should we do? Even if we ask Juryi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it! First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Whoever is secretly helping Jur-E must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. 
So, we should be able to find some hints in Jiri's manifesto on who we're dealing with. Come on, let's get back to Yen Shang Tea House.